free for. Here we are in uh, beautiful Central Park, one of the actually, you know, a lot of people think New York City is lost or New York City is something that can just be given up. Looking out, I see the beautiful fountain statue, pond, people rowing in the little boats and the city escape. Everything. Everything, it's a real beautiful scenario. Nobody would believe this is New York City if they didn't know that this existed. And down this way we have a mall, a tree-lined walkway with uh, nice statues of literary figures uh, lining the walk. It's beautiful. You've probably seen it in a lot of movies. Uh, and then at the very foot of that walkway we have a statue of Christopher Columbus. And of course we wanted to film there but we couldn't because there was some multiculturalism going on. And uh, you know people were also walking directly up and disrespecting the statue as our cameraman uh, tried to scout the location. Which makes sense, uh, you know, Christopher Columbus and uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, George Washington, these will, be, these will be the next on the agenda. I believe that uh, Thomas Jefferson statue at University of Virginia was vandalized just this morning. It's not surprising. Uh, and it's part of the ongoing uh, attack and erasure of our people. I mean, as far as Charlottesville itself, uh, what happened, uh, I arrived to the rally point in McIntyre Park with my, my crew, my friends, my security team. We waited a little while as people gathered. Uh, hundreds of people were gathering in McIntyre and we were going to, into Charlottesville sort of in waves in these, in these vans that were taking us in. I would believe I was in the third or the fourth wave, I don't remember which, doesn't really matter. But uh, I was with my security team, I was with my friend Alex, my friend Johnny, some of you might have heard of them. And uh, we, we got into the uh, center of town there and we walked down the main street and uh, we were surrounded on all sides by unrestrained mobs of leftists, liberals, Antifa, whatever you want to call them, I don't even know, it doesn't really matter. Just raving hyenas, uh, people absolutely berserk out of control, violence, snarling, throwing all manner of chemicals, uh, feces, urine, bricks, bottles of beer, little broken sharp things, anything that they might find, uh, they were they were throwing at us. So yeah, we were uh, we were suffered multiple different attacks from angles. Luckily, my, my security detail was very professional and shielded me. I did get pepper sprayed. One time, uh, not directly in the face, so it didn't. I was. It didn't hamper my ability to breathe or, or move or anything. But it, I was definitely having it down the side of my face. Now I don't want to make like I'm a big martyr or anything. I got off light compared to some people. I mean, we have people with that had open wounds, gashes, bloody, bloody mess. People sprayed directly in the face. Faked Alaska was partially blinded. It seems, um, and hopefully pursuing some kind of case. I mean, if we can get get who his attacker was, that would be fantastic uh, to get some kind of legal penalty for this person that, that uh, you know, partially blinded this guy. Um, yeah, and it was just, it was it was complete chaos and completely uncontrolled. It was, uh, could have been controlled. Um, I mean, I've been to rallies and protests before where the police have done a good job and they have kept Antifa separate from us, protected our First Amendment rights, our, our right to go and speak our mind in a public venue. Uh, and for whatever reason, they decided that they weren't going to do it this time. And my opinion, you know, my opinion as an observer is that this was malicious. This was capricious. This is an intentional uh, attempt to set us up to create violence at a scene where we were to make us look like we were the violent ones, to make us look like criminals. Um, and uh, all self-defense on our part has been spun as if it was aggressive, which is just not the case. I mean, why, why would we do this? Why would we go into a town and just create havoc? We wanted to go into a town stand in the public square, say our peace, and uh, this is what happened. I mean, this is how threatening our message apparently is to the establishment and is to the uh, liberal order, to the uh, media, to the, uh, the powers that be essentially in this country. They just can't have it. Uh, you know, we thought at least, at the very least, they would let us speak our minds, but it's too much even for that. So they, they activated, they, they incited these raving mobs of violent people to come at us and uh, and they did, and uh, they were they they were successful in their attempts to prevent us from speaking. And uh, to those people that were there, to the Antifa, to the protesters, you're not standing up for anything. You're not standing against racism. You're not standing up for humanity. You're not standing for a better future. You're simply tools of the system to shut down dissidents. You, whatever ideology you think you might have, it's it's garbage. It's bogus. It's it's it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think you believe. Uh, you are simply a tool that is activated by the system to go out and create chaos 
to allow them to shut down true dissidents and uh, true revolutionaries. So I hope you're proud of yourselves. I mean, mission accomplished. But it doesn't really matter. I think in the end, uh, you know, the first few days was bad. It was bad. The narrative, the press, they made us look bad. But uh, in the end, the truth comes out. And it's starting to come out. And they can't maintain this frame. I mean, the truth is the most powerful thing. And the frame, the media can only lie, spin for so long. And already we have the media, uh, no one trusts it. People don't trust it already, so why would they trust it here? Uh, I mean, I've spoken with people, even people that disagree with our point of view. Um, maybe they're even leftists. And I've asked them, like, do you really believe what the corporate media says? And then they have to sort of think for a second, check themselves, and be like, no, I don't, I don't believe what these people say. They're liars, they're con artists, and they spin everything to be in favor of uh, the establishment, the deep state, and those in power right now. So why, why would they tell the truth about us? I mean, you don't have to agree with us, but you have to at least understand that those in power are threatened by us and are lying about us in order to, uh, to make sure our message doesn't get heard by the general population. So that's basically what I experienced. Um, as far as once we got into the park, uh, you know, it was actually a lot of fun for about 20 minutes, I would say, where I saw a lot of old friends, gave a lot of hugs, a lot of high fives, slap on the backs, like some really great reunions um, with people in like a really exciting, highly charged environment. And uh, it wasn't, we, then we tried, we sort of attempted to go up to sort of the back, I don't really know how to describe it, sort of the back corner of the park up by the statue. And uh, Richard was there, um, Asmador was there, I believe Wife with a Purpose was there, I was with Johnny Monoxide. Uh, and then I remember all of a sudden I look behind me, there's this big, big stir and, and Chris Cantwell had been maced once again. Once again, he was the victim of a vicious attack. He was lying on the ground getting treated by some of the medical staff. He was, uh, he was, looked like he was okay. He was laughing about it as usual, as is, you know, his, his personality, pretty cavalier personality. So he was all right. But then, then upon turning to look at that spectacle, I turn back and I see a cop with a bullhorn telling us that this is an illegal gathering and we have to disperse before I even, before anybody even got the chance to speak, before, really before the rally was scheduled to start, which was at noon. Uh, they basically, basically, my, my, my theory is that they herded us all into the park and as soon as they felt that there were enough people there, they called uh, the premeditated plan that they have because the governor's emergency order had already been written up. It was issued at 11.06 that morning. They activated it as soon as they felt they had enough people in the park and then they herded us right back out onto the street into, into the maw, the gaping maw, the snarling, salivating, gaping maw of these raging hyenas, uh, these raging left-wing Antifa hyenas in the street that were just absolutely, I mean, I really, I, I mean, they say that we're hate and that's, I have never seen people whose faces uh, were more contorted and twisted and snarling expressions of absolute rage and inhuman frenzy as I've seen on these people. I mean, I have never seen anything like that. I mean, if you talk about hate, I mean, I can't imagine the hatred that has to dwell in somebody's soul in order for it to be expressed in their face like that, for it to come out in that kind of absolute, just unreasoning frenzy, just glassy eyes, snarling, contorted, twisted faces. I've never seen anything like it. And on multiple people, I've just never seen anything like that. And uh, I mean, <laughs> if we're hateful, then I don't know what is. That's demonic, satanic. I have never seen anything like it before. And we were basically pushed by the police out into this, this frenzied horde of people and of course, you know, violence resulted. Of course, none of it was initiated by us or instigated by us. Uh, people defended themselves. And if you take, you know, if you, if you edit things out of context, you don't show the whole thing, you can make it appear that anybody's violent. You can tell any story with two second video clips. You need to see the whole thing. You need to see the whole context of the event, everything that happened. And you'll see that clearly we went with the intent of speaking freely, speaking our minds, and we were attacked. And uh, the reasons for those attacks were to make sure that we were not allowed to speak, to make sure that we were shut down. And if you look at all the literature that these people put out, all the propaganda that they put out on their own websites prior to our event, it was all shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. Now, how is it that, how do you shut down a legally permitted, peaceful, free speech rally? How do you shut that down? Well, the only way is violence. The only way you do that is create enough violence that the police have to shut it down. And that was their plan all along. So if you look at everything we said prior, and I myself said on multiple podcasts and on my website uh, that this was, an intended to, this was intended to be a completely peaceful event. We simply wanted to come in and speak our minds and then leave. The citizens of Charlottesville uh, could have been undisturbed 
for except for an afternoon where hey there's some guys in the park that are doing their thing but uh, this was not this is not what the uh, the leftists wanted they wanted uh, they wanted a riot they wanted violence they wanted to make us look bad and they or engineered it so that that's how you shut down something peaceful the only way to shut something down as peaceful is with violence you have to attack and make make it so that it can't proceed Donald Trump is Julius Caesar played some people some friends of ours disrupted it it's pretty funny but uh, once again a nice famous little piece of architecture we have here in Central Park like right in this mall area and down here is uh, the walk with all the statues of the literary figures which is pretty beautiful and pretty amazing place to come and sit and contemplate on a nice day trees I mean look at this it's beautiful it's fantastic and it's a testament to our culture really and to our civilization and it would be a shame it would be a real shame to lose all this I think so yeah it's been basically a relentless campaign of slander uh, against us and our people and intend to uh, make us look like crazed animals or horrible neo-nazis racists all these slur terms that they use against our people that just want to stand up and uh, really it's not fair it's not right and um, the narrative that they have been trying to spin has started to collapse the truth is coming out um, they can only keep it going for so long uh, as far as the unfortunate car accident that happened um, you know it was an uncontrolled environment there was a lot of protesters breaking the law people jaywalking people blocking traffic as we know blocking traffic is a well-known tactic of left-wing protesters for whatever reason they feel like this earns them the sympathy of the public to uh, go ahead and block traffic but uh, they were doing it and there was a, they caused a car accident and uh, I believe that in court the truth will come out I believe that the individual that's implicated in this will be found not guilty and anybody else that uh, was involved or they're trying to blame for it if they're gonna it's gonna be a big embarrassment I think it's gonna be a huge embarrassment for the entire media complex who has uh, basically abandoned all principles all reason of, of journalism I mean they, they have already convicted him in the court of public opinion he is not like anyone else he is innocent until proven guilty and he hasn't been proven guilty um, and I challenge them to prove that he's a murderer there is no evidence that he's a murderer um, it, as far as we know there was a car accident that's the most that we know and anybody that says anything more than that is being completely irresponsible and is going to end up completely embarrassed when the court decision uh, finally hits and when I, as I believe he will be found completely innocent so our people are innocent we did nothing wrong the people that opposed us the people that stood up to us and attacked us violently the people that plotted against us in the halls of power are, are evil people these are bad people and uh, they, they oppose free speech, they oppose the rights of white Americans and all uh, white people around the world and we are not going to stand up for it any longer. Uh, we're fighting back and their narrative is collapsing and they're not going to be able to keep up these lies and these slander much longer. Yeah, so here we got the statue of Shakespeare. Uh, it's a beautiful statue. And uh, just like these other literary figures who maybe aren't specifically politically or um, ideologically on our side or anything like that, it doesn't really matter because these men existed in a world, a European world, where their assumptions and their culture, they didn't have to focus on these kind of political issues. They could write and talk about anything that inspired them. And uh, this is sort of, this is the, the culture that, this is the culture that we want back for our people, where we, we don't have to be focusing constantly on politics, constantly on ideology. We simply can talk about and that, that which inspires us. Um, so poems, plays, novels, all these wonderful figures that are part of our history and culture. And uh, they lived in a world where these kind of issues, you know, they had their, I'm sure they had their political and ideological struggles, but they, they didn't have to struggle for their very survival. And uh, that's the difference. And so that's what we want back. So yeah. This rally was kind of a, it was a turning point for us. It definitely revealed uh, some things that I think maybe people hadn't realized as to just how much the system is against us, to just how much they hate us, to how much they're willing to sabotage us. And I think ultimately it was, it was a success. It will prove to have been a success. And it will also prove to have been a point at which we realized now we have to be serious. Now we have to get serious. Because before this, I know for a lot of us this was fun. It was something we did in our off time. We trolled, you know, we joked around. And the other rallies we've done have not met this kind of massive opposition from, from the, the, the state 
from the media, from the left. And uh, this one, this one did meet massive opposition from all of those parties. And so going forward, uh, we have to understand that now it's serious, now it's real. We have to present the best that we can, make sure that our voice, our points are heard, uh, don't fall into ridiculous traps that the media sets for us. We have our own media now. We don't need them. So, you know, they are the enemy. They will lie, slander, defame, do whatever they can to try to make us look bad to the public, but uh, we don't need them. We have our own media with which we can present. We have to present well, be organized, be ready, uh, and just keep pushing forward. We're going to do more rallies. Uh, we learned from this one, we learned how better organizational tactics, better um, you know, presentation tactics, and, and we learned just how much they will do to stop us, and we know what we have to do in future to counter that. So we're going to do more rallies, we're going to keep going with our media platforms. We were attacked on the internet. Um, last week was a very bad week for attacks on free speech on the internet with uh, the Daily Stormer. TRS also was attacked, uh, Radix was attacked, All Right was attacked. Countercurrents was attacked. Multiple sites were attacked and attempted to be shut down. But uh, we bounced back as we always do. We have the skills. We have the technical skills in our in our in our community to keep ourselves going to keep pushing forward. So we're gonna get our message out there, and we're gonna keep keep going. Ultimately, this will be a good thing. We're going to grow from it. Uh, we're just gonna keep pushing forward. And uh, you know, just check out uh, my site, the right stuff. Stay tuned into AltRight.com and all the various sites to keep up on it and, and just keep pushing forward. Don't be black pilled, don't be discouraged. This just means that we're onto something. If they're coming at us this strong, it just means that we're onto something. And uh, they can't afford it, but they can't avoid it either. So that's really it.